I really recommend uh, looking into Midwest Tactical Solutions if you have a, a 10 millimeter because they make uh, duty holsters. This is the Enforcer OS. It is a, I do believe it's a level 3 retention. Could be wrong. Um, I have it set up in uh, Safari Land drop leg um, with the QLS system, which is really cool because you can have your holster like this. You can have a bunch of them and then you can just take it off like that. Let's say you want to put a Glock 17 on, you can just slide it on there. It's pretty much like a giant uh, buckle. I don't know what these are called. You know, they're on backpacks and stuff. It's like a giant version of that. And then it goes right on these little rails on here. And it's good to go. <clears throat> the cool thing about this, uh, this is the exact same thing that Safari Land uses. So you push down and then roll it forward. It's very natural from being right here. But if somebody were trying to struggle and get this from you, they would really have to know a lot about duty holsters to be able to get this off. And th this isn't going anywhere. So the cool thing about this is when you're, you know, LARPing or doing whatever the fuck you do with a gigantic 10 millimeter, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. I'm just always impressed about how much stuff there is on here and how they got this to fit it. You know, like it, when it's in there, it doesn't go anywhere. But this is my apocalypse, end of the world setup. I'd like to get a four mag uh, pouch on the side. And I figure since I have COVID, you know, I have nothing going on today, might as well just wear it. A lot of people don't realize how big the 40 is. Here's a banana or bananas for scale. The top of the slide is nine and a half inches long. So the slide is nine and a half inches long. Your sight radius is eight inches. Kind of makes the SRO look tiny. Even the shroud, the Jaegerwerk shroud, usually makes the SRO look uh, gigantic. Like, I, there's a picture online of a Glock 26 they have this on, and it looks comical. It looks like putting an EOTech, you know, on, on a handgun or something. <clears throat> I really wish that uh, Olight would offer the Balder series, especially this one. I love the light laser combo to where if you were at standoff distance, you know, someone's breaking into your garage or something, you don't know if they're armed. You don't really have to look down your sights as much. You can just you can hold them at laser point with the light right there, which is really cool. <clears throat> or my, the way I remember is lean it to the left, you're just laser. Lean it to the right, you're just light. So this thing is really, really, really sweet. This is like my dream gun. I remember when this gun was unveiled at Shot Show in 2015, and I just I just freaking drooling over it. I love that it's kind of a mid generation, so they have the the cut in the front like the 26 has always had, which I love. Right? And you can kind of tell a little bit of mid generation stuff here because the extractor is DLC coated, like all the Gen 5s. If you look at the thickness of this slide right here, I mean this thing is gigantic. It's it's just it's a beefcake. Since I'm around the house, I have uh, some uh, critical duty, Hornady critical duty, and uh, this is a. Uh, I don't think 10 millimeter gets enough credit for how beefy these things are, and they they're just ugly, nasty looking around. A cool thing about that is that they're a truncated round, meaning because it's straight walled, you can put it all the way down inside the case if you'd like to without having change, to change the geometry of the bullet, like a 9mm. 9mm are tapered, so they, it's kind of funky. They can only go in so far. You can actually see it right about there. And these are just 180 grains, so they, they pretty much use a, uh, they use a 40 Smith & Wesson bullet with the high amount of antimony 
I think that's what it's called in the lead it makes it harder and when these things are traveling really really fast like this um, they actually expand a lot more than they usually would out of a 40 I think these are traveling at 1250 or 1300 somewhere around there around 715 foot pounds and uh, right before that band was coming I uh, I ordered some of the SGM 30 round mags because they're grandfathered in one as well right uh, what's really cool about these Dawson sites is they they are true co-witness so they if you wanted to aim at the bottom of the optic you'd be right there on the dot um, I'm, I'm zeroed for about 50 feet as far as I could tell at the range that's that's pretty true uh, it's pretty hard to fill myself I don't really have a bipod or anything yet but it's working really good if I haven't said before already if you have an SRO one of the biggest weakness with the SRO for duty use the reason why police and stuff don't carry it is because the the aluminum housing, which I hear was actually originally titanium when they showed the um, the original at SHOT Show, I think 2014. The original one was a titanium housing and, and then they eventually went down to aluminum. And another one of the things I don't like about the SRO is actually the bottom plate on this is carbon steel. So you have to oil the crap out of it before you put it on your slide and hopefully it doesn't rust over time. And Trigicon does have a lifetime warranty. Um, so if you have any issues with it, you can send it back to them and they'll fix it, give you a new one or whatever. Uh, the Jaegerworks uh, Bro Shroud is a mild steel and it's coated, it's nitrided. And I wish they would have DLC'd that too, but it's got this little funky thing right here where they, they dimpled this to say that it uh, acts as a brass deflector. I kind of call bullshit on that and I wish they would have done it on both sides just to make it even. I don't want to damage the finish, so I'll probably leave it how it is. They give you a little bit of neoprene in here. They say that you should put that inside of the bros uh, for heavier guns. I think that they should just put it on there in general. It acts as another absorbent layer for drop damage. Uh, the coating on the glass has all these funky colors to filter out all the colors besides uh, red. So that when you look through here, the red is very true. The negative of that is it kind of has a light blue color, but not nearly as much as the RMR. The RMR is just, it's crazy blue, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't bought one. Uh, 6.2 inch barrel, polygonal rifled. The plus side of polygonal rifling is that uh, with a copper jacket, it gets in there really nice and tight, unlike button, traditional button cut rifling which causes causes a lot uh, with the polygonal rifling it makes uh, there's more pressure applied behind the bullet because the copper swells and fills the polygonal shape as you know uh, button rifling that doesn't really happen as, as well so you get uh, supposedly you get an additional percentage um, of velocity out of a polygonal barrel than you would in a traditional rifled barrel uh, one of the negatives of the Olight um, Balder is that, you don't know if you can tell, but it's offset to the side a little bit. Um, I just, I don't really like that. The laser will never be true, so that's why I have it uh, to about, you know, like standoff distance, 10 to 15 feet. It's pretty sweet, though. So far my experience with COVID is that I'm eating up all my uh, sick time and I feel like I have mild ass allergies and it's annoying. Yeah. Midwest Tactical Solutions Enforcer OS. It's, it's badass man. This would be my, my choice for a duty gun. Not only can you fire 10 millimeter out of this, you can fire 40 cal out of the same barrel, and in a Glock it'd probably be just fine because you already get the same amount of um, loose tolerance in the barrel, anyways. 
and the free bore is like three millimeters four millimeters it's not even that big of a deal accuracy shift isn't even that much so um and i have been looking around and i've heard from alaskan ballistics that it can't be done because you already got a hold of kkm but it would be cool to get a 357 sig barrel for this i think that it can be done but you'd have to put a very light spring in it um, that would make this a three caliber gun so 10 millimeter 40 cal and 357 sig and i have seen a video of a guy experimenting with a nine millimeter conversion on the internet it, I ne he never had a follow-up to it, so I imagine it didn't work, but there's a lot to be said for these big, awesome, bare assault pistols. <laughs> yeah, like this thing is, she is a beast. This is the Desert Eagle of Glocks, the largest, most powerful Glock ever made. Alright, that's my rant for right now, but if you're looking for a cool holster, if you have a big 10 millimeter, or just, you know, any duty size gun, you should look at Midwest Tactical Solutions. They have a ton of different options. They offer this Cordura wrapping, which uh, eliminates glare at distance, so it's not shiny. It's really neat. I just wandered out and show you my roof in my kitchen, or my ceiling. I've had this pothos for what five years kind of entry kind of introduces you to the kitchen all right guys don't get covid you'll eat up all your sick time and it doesn't feel like anything